Hi team, it's day 50. I hope you're doing well. Wanting to get into the six daily goals, but also wanting to talk a little bit about calorie density versus nutrient density. Now, I know in the past, I've talked to you about calorie dense foods, and uh, if you remember, I held up a, a pizza just to let you know how many calories were in that. Uh, but I wanted to go through nutrient density and just kind of give you some difference and a little bit of examples. But before we do that, let's jump into the six goals. And I don't have to use any red today, which, you know, sounds pretty good. Uh, I got 41 days left because I'm, I'm a day ahead with the, the 90 days. So um, on day 91, I will be uh, at 206 and uh, maybe sooner. I don't know. I'm thinking the way it's going though. I'm gonna be right there. So, 219 this morning. If you remember the last time uh, I did some heavy legs, I ate more carbs uh, to make sure I had the energy to do heavy legs. Well, that was the case here. Uh, I was 218.8, I think, six or eight. So I was almost 219, a little bit of water retention, not too worried about it. Uh, I was at 218 consistently um, a couple days in a row. So I'll bounce back from that, kind of like the stock market bounces down, hopefully see it continue to go up in the next couple days. Uh, calories, I was 2105, so that's what I mean. I ate a little larger load of carbohydrates to support me uh, in my heavy lifting, so I was a little higher on calories, 118 ounces of water. I did get seven hours of sleep, which I'm happy about that. 60 minutes of my workout, because I do take a little bit more rest in between legs when I'm doing them heavy, and then 259 grams of protein. That one snuck up on me, but my daughter didn't eat uh, some of her chicken breast and cheese yesterday that I made some wraps for. Uh, yeah, so there we go. A little bit more protein than I thought, but overall, we're looking pretty good. Uh, I'm not concerned with the 219. The trajectory is still a trend down. So when we look at calorie dense versus nutrient dense, what do we mean? And um, in the mastery course, uh, when you talk through kind of the physical stuff, um, they talk about uh, crap. Stay away from the crap and get to the better stuff. So when you take a look at calorie dense, when you look at CRAP, what it stands for, carbonation, refined sugar, aspartame, and preservatives. I hope those are spelled right. I really don't care if they're not, but you get the picture. Um, we've talked about this before. So carbonation is kind of like your sodas or pops, whichever part of the country you're in, and the sugary stuff, right? And, and what's a good uh, alternative to that is, you know, your water, teas, your coffees, you know, anything that doesn't have uh, that sugar, the preservatives in it. Um, and I told you about water. We've went through the sparkling water, uh, you know, find a way to get through getting rid of this. Not, and when you say carbonation, it normally, when people drink carbonated stuff, it's not calorie free, like the waters that I've got. It's normally has the sugars and, or it's got the aspartame or, you know, whatever in it. Refined sugar, that would be anything, uh, that literally has refined sugars like sweets, uh, cakes, uh, even your some in, some of your enriched stuff, uh, anything that really isn't that much of a of a whole food, but refined sugar, uh, cakes and sweets, not that great to roll with. Um, aspartame, we've talked about that. Uh, artificial sweetener, we know what that does. Can you know somewhat create a uh, false spike in in glucose and really get you confused about insulin. Uh, which we know when we're in insulin, we're in an anabolic state. It doesn't allow us to release the growth hormone we need in our first phase sleep. So like, if you haven't watched all of this, like this should just be, the, if the people that have been following for 50 days are like, yeah, Richard, yeah, yeah, you've said this to before, but you noticed yesterday I talked to you about, you know, supporting your loved ones when they work out and things like that. I'm just trying to give you a little bit of simple things over the next two or three days to help you with helping that other person get going and kind of try to break it down even more simplistic than I did back in my, in my videos. But so stay away from the crap, carbonation, refined sugar, aspartame, preservatives. That's just how long is the label? That should probably give you a, uh, a test. For instance, tonight, um, when you take a look at, you know, the preservatives, I'll talk about tonight, but the alternatives, fruits and veggies, whole grains, whole foods, water, tea, coffee. I already, you saw the list. But for instance, like preservatives tonight, my kids had orange chicken. We'll talk about nutrient dense versus calorie dense. So I had chicken breast and I had broccoli, um, salt and pepper on them, a little bit of, of seasonings on them, which are normal, natural. Um, my kids had orange chicken, Trader Joe's orange chicken, and um, which doesn't have a ton of ingredients, but has enough. 
and I ate 20 ounces of chicken and two cups of steamed broccoli, which I, which I loved. It was seasoned up, all really good. Mine was like 650 calories. Uh, what was in the orange chicken and rice that I got to, but the rice was good, you know, it was just plain white rice and they put a little seasoning on it, but it was roughly 2,200. So each of them had 1,100 calories. I had uh, 650 calories uh, for myself. And so I had about half the calories and got way more vitamins, way more minerals out of that than they got out of their orange chicken and rice. So really when it comes down to it, the calorie dense versus nutrient dense, you know, you're really looking for A, you get more bang for your buck, you get more substance and volume for uh, the amount of calories you're getting. B, um, with the nutrient dense, uh, what we talk about is you're getting more vitamins, minerals, just good things for your body, and you'll be surprised that foods with this stuff in it compared to your whole foods, as you transition from one to the other, and I, I've talked about this when we did aspartame, like your cravings start to subside a little bit. So you'd be surprised. But anyway, I hope this is good. I hope this helps. Stay away from the crap. Uh, that's a pretty good, <laughs> good one that I, I learned in the mastery course. But, um, you know, stick with more of those. Do as much as you can. Now, granted, when you have cheat meals or when you want to give your, your body a break, you'll notice uh, as you do those over time, your body, as soon as it gets out of the rhythm of, always preservatives, always refined sugar, and you get to the place of eating more whole foods, fruits, veggies, uh, legumes, uh, whole grains, uh, water, coffee, tea, um, all natural flavored stuff, I think what you'll find is you'll get less cravings, but then when you go back and you, uh, I guess I say fall off the wagon, but even you know doing a cheat day, eating a sleep at Warriors or whatever, you will notice that right away it's not too bad, but the further away you get from doing that consistently, your body feels it. That's why I tell you to track calories. Like your body, um, and take a food diary, like I said last night, your body will start to feel and you will know. You'll get a stuffy nose. Uh, you know, you just won't feel good the next day. Your joints will swell a little bit. It's weird. So the faster you can get away from this stuff and the more you can mix this stuff in, you will just overall feel better. So think about this and then this will be my last thing for the night. And I don't know, this, is, this isn't anywhere. This is just Richie thinking right now. Is think about what we do with cows when they when they talk about you know cows out out to pasture and things, they're grazing, you know all this kind of cool stuff. Um, but when they get to the feedlot, what do they eat? They eat carbs. They eat corn. They get fat and they get sick. Um, so think about all of this stuff. What does that do to us? It gets us fat. It gets us sick. You've all eaten a grass-fed cow as opposed to one that's marbled up, uh, they're a little leaner. Um, so just remember what these foods will tend to do to you versus these. You don't have as many cravings with these, so you, you're not gonna overeat those as much. These, like I talked about the chips the other day, they're made in the lab, they're there to make you crave more, to eat more, and then the obesity pandemic that we have continues. Our healthcare costs rise, and people die earlier than they should uh, because they didn't have the discipline to hop over to this a little more in their life. So food for thought, definitely food for thought. And uh, if you guys have any comments, questions, let me know, drop them below. But otherwise I can do more stuff like this over the next coming days. Uh, as you support your loved ones or close friends uh, to jump on this journey with you, and if you haven't yet, go back and watch this from the beginning and, and let me know what you think. And as always, uh, I thank you for your support and I look forward to talking to you tomorrow.